Welcome to the NBA.com. This is Jonas Reporters for the 21st of November, day before Thanksgiving. Well, we've had the holiday trade. Again, we talked about this the other day. This is the 23%, 26.84. Below, there's nothing except for we have a couple of algo markers. 26.35, and then you have the 26.03, which is the 0%. Um, you know, we closed 37 just off of it. We went tiny bit below it. Uh, that's that carry through that happens, but um, not surprising that it becomes a significant spot where uh, we closed just above it the last time before and then bounced off of it uh, to create the last rally. We're doing so again here and um, well, uh, things start to turn around. Uh, you'd be at slightly higher uh, DOC red and slightly higher for the um, Check out the reality is though we had gold below 50% and we know what that usually leads to a uh, move towards the lows. So I would say that we've pretty closely uh, come to exactly where the previous close on that dip was. That's a pretty good size uh, little wick follow through as the fear grips everyone. Uh, it's always amazing to me how the headlines talk about, you know, the big drop for the day, but you know, they forget the huge move that was uh, made on the way back up uh, that doesn't uh, generate the excitement. So it's always interesting. We haven't dipped below the red line either. So you have that element of it that uh, the potential is uh, for more oversold. We're getting a little bit of a bounce back right now. Uh, earlier in futures, uh, we were already down nine-ish or so. So from the low, we were already down to like uh, 32. And then it bounced back up. So, we've got some pretty good action within the week setup. Uh, ATR, 51.2 from the other day. It's uh, slightly down so far this morning because obviously you have pre-market range, which pretty big pre-market range overall considering the realities. Now, we talked about that we expected the NASDAQ to make new lows in relation to this move, and it has done exactly that. The simple fact was is that uh, you had the uh, declining shakeout, which mimicked the S&P, but we had the dip below the red line. And we were looking, and it also had performed a little bit worse uh, overall, comparatively speaking, to the S&P. So the downdraft past was not a shock. Not at all, because we were already below the 23. Uh, and the euro holding exactly above its 23% uh, line. Uh, this is beautiful central bank rollover. Nothing has changed in the euro. Uh, likewise, nothing has really changed that much in the U.S. except for the fact that uh, there's been a significant flight to safety, which is what has created uh, this move in treasuries, even though everyone understands that rates are going to be rising. And that should be going the opposite way because clearly oil is reflecting deflationary pressure more than anything. But the reality is this is just that ability of uh, shale and uh, supply to increase rather significantly uh, at short notice and also the recognition that sanctions against Iran and that are not going to be effective because the EU and that is going to bypass them because they want their oil. Gold still holding up, and that's a further indication that uh, some people are becoming wary because, as you know, with the rate rise, uh, U.S. debt is going to become troubling, I think is probably the best way to describe it, uh, at a minimum. So let's shrink this baby down a little bit and take a gander at the entire day range because it was quite a fantastic day. Um, we started off here into... Uh, Sell signal, and I mean, just classic wide open snake DOC spread. Actually, didn't even qualify as a DOC spread because you didn't have the sign coming from below above. But what you had was the clear opening of the mouth with the orange breaking down below, and boom, look at that carry through. Uh, there was no change in that steel until right about here. We did dip below which effectively meant that um, on a significant buy signal, you actually had a buy uh, setup configuration. This first one came in, so I want to move that, right about here. And 
always on that primary one, especially coming off of a dip from the red line, I usually expect those lows to be revisited. And sure enough, not only were they revisited, but new ones, but that made secondary move at a P2 level much more attractive. And in fact, that was the one that took off. So we'll expand and get a better view of that from right here. Uh, we were coming off the new lows. So this one, unless you're really aggressive, you'd have to recognize that you potentially have no orange new lows when it first crossed, but uh, came in bar after. And the real secondary clear signal cyan below red, just below the 50%, and that really propelled. Uh, a nice move, at which point we started to get a series of, uh, what I look for is these little catalyst move where you get uh, similar crossover at the same point, peak moves. In this particular case, you had a convergence with it, so to me, this is like a clear warning. If you take it, you've got to take it when you're at the 100%, you can't take it uh, lower because these can still updraft, uh, well, even like this one right here, this is a little bit... Uh, stronger because you didn't have the red moving uh, directly below because that takes place like on this one it should be slid over right there where the green crosses below at that significant point here the green stays above for another couple but it retraces fills in these positive extremes right here uh, in this case so you had some nice lower targets all the way down so it gives it a little bit more uh, oomph, and then at this point we could see uh, a bullish thing. So here you had the steel crossing over, and then the tongue of the cyan moves right into the mouth of it. So you had the warning, the previous, you know, and this is something I, I like to point out to look for. It's like, especially when I'm coming to key pivotal support areas, and I want you to note those because it's like why do some hold and others not well we begin to see the clarity of that uh, at this particular point you can see in this downdraft the crossover of the steel above red obviously is a warning that hey potentially that's closing uh, the downturn and then boom right about here cyan now uh, I mean steel has moved over orange which is an indication that you have a significant slowing of the momentum potentially and then boom, the mouth moves right inside, or the tongue, so to speak, inside of that open beak of the uh, orange and steel. And then you're looking for your crossover of green-red. There it is. And in the next bar, right after, you get the orange dip, and that is your takeaway from that. So you, uh, I like to point that out so you can see it building, and say, hey, oh, maybe I need to adjust my stop, take my gain at the, key 50 percent uh, level right there or at least a portion thereof and uh, be much tighter with collecting my gains and that's the most effective way to read those kind of situations and it becomes very nice when that takes place um, it was cute because I was reading I was having my uh, alerts activated here where it uh, will alert and send the no orange but um, creating the one that will actually give us the full uh, buy snake uh, or sell snake configuration, like over here, uh, just before the market closed on the day, uh, was gold above the 50%. So we're expecting a move towards the highs, got well above the 76, but produced DOC spread as well as that same open mouth. And this is kind of like a fantastic one you have. Cyan was under red. Moves above red. Green was over red, dips back down to red, at the same time crosses below orange, where orange is then taking over steel, with steel crossing below, as well as crossing below science. So all of them all in one, boom. And uh, it was pretty fast downdraft because of that. And uh, then we ended up with the nice dip of the orange, which uh, obviously happened in the wee hours for me, later afternoon, West Coast time color would be a yellow. Just about the 50% range when that took place. And you can see it stayed with it because the orange doesn't move above until, well, right about here when you start to get the positive extremes uh, as a warning. But uh, almost had cyan under red. Not quite. So we'll probably get a little bit of backfill in here. We now know the distance between there. So this low is going to get uh, filled back 46 153, so that's a good seven points. 
This is the beauty of these kinds of ranges. Uh, you can really capture some pretty decent outside moves if you're willing to uh, wait for it and allow it to play itself out. And it's just a matter of paying attention to the signals that are uh, pointing themselves to you. That way you're fully cognizant of what to expect. So easy enough, this will be the last report until we have a report for Monday uh, because the half session that will take place on Friday won't be much of anything. And um, the European futures will still trade during their normal hours. So keep that in mind if you're interested in uh, playing some of the light action, which uh, tends to be a little bit more volatile. And given what we've seen the last couple of days, it could be uh, even more interesting. As always, though, trade well. I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving holiday, and we will certainly be around and uh, we'll have uh, probably some additional updates because that extra time uh, to fill in some of these alert uh, configurations and color changes uh, should be neat. As always, trade well. We'll talk to you later.